This conference will now be recorded. As we said, okay, as we said, you take you take any e-commerce site, there will be two important things. So there will be mainly two important things. What are those? First one is product and the second one is content. Products, second one is content. Then what is the meaning of product? So let's say I, I click on this particular, uh, this one. So this is called a product. So you can see this is called a product. This is called a product. Now, what is the meaning of content? Whatever you see in the home page, this banner, this, these are all called the content. Now, this product and the content changes frequently. These products and the content are changed frequently. Answer is yes. So that means we need to manage these products and content products and the content we need to manage this product and content so to manage the products we have the product catalogs and who will manage the product catalogs product manager and which tool will be used product cockpit okay product cockpit so to manage the products we have the product catalogs or through product catalogs we manage the products and who will manage it product manager which tool product cockpit then to manage the content or through content catalogs we manage the content and who will do this content manager or content editor and so on so so on so and which tool we will use smart edit that's it that's it then as i told you as i told you so this is a uh, this is called a website so if you see the content right right now we are discussing the content content catalogs right now we are discussing content catalogs so in the content catalog what are the different terminologies we have what are the different jargons we have can you recollect it once so the first okay. one is website so within the website you have the uh, yeah. templates uh, and uh, using these templates you can create the pages then within that you have content slots and the content slot names then within the content slot you have the components so you have bunch of the components link component button component logo component like this you have different different components these are the bunch of the things next up now if you see here can you please focus on this i will close this this is not required so this is the website so this is a which website apparel uk website apparel apa apparel uk site site so this website will have what a base store this website will have the base store so that means if we take this is the website this website will have the base store where can we see that information go to the back office back office the tool we get it after installation go to the back office then go to the WCMS web content management system and go to the website. Okay, go to the website. So this is the apparel UK website and the website will have the website will have the base store map. You can see so this is the website and this is the base store map. So that means for apparel UK site, what is the base store? apparel uk is a base store now let's understand base store functionalities or base store features so the first one is if you go to the base store okay so if you go to the base store so you can see the first one is id so as i told id is used for programming purpose then the second one is what name name is used for display purpose then third one is what so you can see there is a language and the currencies there is a language and the currencies what is the purpose of the language and currencies so whatever you are seeing let's say if i go here and you can see english is there currency is there and all these are all coming from website based store website based store that's it 
next if you come down if you come down so there is a captcha enabled is another functionality captcha enabled so we discussed this one yesterday so captcha enabled and if you want to implement the captcha functionality so please remember this in the real time if you want to implement the captcha functionality you need to do certain you need to add certain extensions so therefore you can see the help documentation please so you can say hi breeze recaptcha in recaptcha okay implementation like that you can quote it you can click now you can see here you are able to see the implementation details so that means for your project if you want to implement the recaptcha functionality then you need to follow this uh, particular material this is a state forward only you will not have bunch of the things here okay so you will not have bunch of the things here but uh, it is a state forward you need to uh, you need to use this action add on okay captcha add on you need to use the captcha add on and uh, start using that captcha in uh, configure it in the spring.xml after that wherever you want in the jsp you can start using it so you can also find some more tutorial here so maybe some people might be explained here okay how to integrate google recaptcha in java applications see implementing in the java applications and implementing in the commerce application implementation wise no difference but uh, sap commerce is having its own way of structure and extensions concept that is only the difference so if at all you have a situation where you want to implement the captcha in your project you can just ask me the link i will provide the link using that you can very well implement it there is no big challenge for this that's it that's about the captcha enablement next what are the other important features on the base store and these are all for indexing okay we have seen the next one is warehouse warehouse so now to understand the warehouse this is the logic right so you have a apparel uk site apparel uk site is mapped with what apparel uk base store apparel uk base store is mapped with the warehouses warehouses so that means we can have greater than or equal to one warehouse then warehouse will have what uh, products and the quantities stock warehouse will have what products and the stock warehouse will have what product and the stock let's quickly do one small uh, uh, this exercise we already done it but let's do it as a situation came now if you see this one so this is the product is not having the stock right now this is the product is not having the stock right now so you can see here i go to this product when i go to this product i don't see the stock now how do i maintain the stock you can see here i don't see the stock how do i maintain the stock go to this particular product before go to that so this is the apparel uk website apparel uk website is having apparel uk base store and base store is mapped with these warehouses so these are the warehouses so that means you need to put the quantity of those products in these warehouses okay so you need to put the quantity of that particular product in these warehouses these are the warehouses so let's quickly maintain one uh, quantity or uh, some quantity in one any one of the warehouse warehouse you can visualize visualize as a godam warehouse you can visualize as a godam so therefore you can take this product number and go to the product table you can go from the product cockpit or you can go from back office so i'll just go for the back office for now okay i'll just go for the go from the back office for now so look for that particular product now product is available stage and online i'll directly go to the online for now okay then you can see there is option called the stock go there and find the stock level you can go there this is available this is available here but it is not available in our warehouses can you see this one this product is available but uh, may not be in this warehouses so let's add that where okay let's go here what is the product code this is the product code and which warehouses are mapped ap underscore warehouse east okay all these are 
so you can maintain the quantity let's say 11 and uh, say done and say done and uh, that's it now come here refresh it till it is out of the stock why sync after this okay so i directly added in the online so i'll go here let me see yes we added it force in stock click on save available quantity reserve quantity okay next to delivery date okay that's fine now come here refresh it so now it's coming now you can see add to bag is also coming add to bag is also coming so like this like this you can start using the warehouse functionality so you can see the relation please so this is a complete relation website is having the best store best store will have one or more uh, warehouses in the warehouse you can maintain the products under equivalent stock of the product that's it so that is the importance of that particular functionality now i will close this all these things let's come back to the website again or let's go to the base store base store is available in the base commerce so you can go here right now i am using which base store apparel uk base store you can open this okay so we are at uh, this one okay good then uh, so now every website will have delivery countries right delivery countries are delivery regions that you can specify here so let's say for example you can go to dominus.com and can you book whatever location or you can book only the location or countries or regions belongs to that particular store Can you book anywhere? No, belongs to the particular so store. So that kind of limitations you can configure here. So therefore, the next functionality available at the best store level is delivery countries or regions. Okay, delivery countries or regions. Okay, next one is that's what you are, as I told you, when you write the functional certificate, this is one of the important question. So which of the following are base store functionalities, a website functionalities like that they will ask. Okay, next. Uh, once that is done, you can see, obviously you have the delivery countries, then billing countries are billing regions. For which countries you need to allow the billing because every country will have its own regions and each, its own currency its own rules of the taxes all those things right that's why you can specify allowed countries or regions for the billing okay next is okay next is is external tax enabled okay external tax enabled so this is a true true false kind of a functionality so why true false functionality is required i discussed yesterday now okay let's say you are making this as a false if you make this as a false let's say for a website tax purpose you are using some tax integration let's say vertex tax integration you are using then this calls will not trigger calls will not trigger so if this external tax calculator or calculation true then only the calls will go to the external tax system so there are different uh, external tax systems, right? Or tax integrations like a Vortex, Avalara, whatever it is. So therefore, for your website, if if you are using any external tax integration, enable this. And if you don't want, you can disable this. Can you guess it? What could be the reason you are going with the enable disable functionality? I told yesterday also with one example. Now we don't want to go one more time. Next, uh, payment prov uh, payment provider. So the next one is payment provider information is configured at a base store level. Can you see this one? Payment provider right now it is a mark payment. So that's why if you go here, let me add the item to cart and click on checkout. Okay, click on checkout. So there is a mark payment provider here. Mark star payment. So you can see mark payment provider XML. 
so that means right now this is a sample website right right now this is a sample website so so let's say i will say abc.com i'm just going as a guest for now okay this is the sample website and we don't have a real payment integration when i say real payment integration what does it mean so paypal we pay card connect that kind of payment integration is not there so that's why sap commerce by default given the mark payment integration so that means we are able to place the order in this website with the mark payment integration so that information is configured here that information is configured here so let's see quickly once so so you can see here so right now i am in the checkout now enter some address let me enter some address quickly so let's say mr okay chenna triple r s uh, address address 111 okay city let's say hello postal code 123 1234 something like that i have given click on next i don't want to save this so what i am trying to do is that i am trying to place the order during placing the order you have a payment functionality during order placement we have the payment functionality for that payment functionality this mark payment will be used you can see here okay so you can see let's say i will select this and the card name so let's say chenna triple r s and a card number something i will give it 1234 1234 1234 one, something i will give it like this like this okay enter some number and click on next so when you click on next can you observe this one please when you click on next so you can see it is going to the mark payment provider mark payment process and there is a something called sop hop and all that we will discuss in the next week more details we'll discuss in the next week that's it so therefore in a simple word what is the conclusion you need to remember so website related payment integration you will configure at the base store level that's it so the next one is uh, okay so next one is can you see this one please yeah so if for your website if you want a uh, um, if you want a uh, pick a uh, buy and collect option pick up in store that kind of options if you want then you have a functionality here to specify you can disable it or you can enable it buy and collect so that means you place the order and pick up at store right so do we have that in the any one website in india so if you see in us if you place the order in uh, any website so let's say you place the order in the apple or some other uh, dell company like that you can also go and pick up at the store do we have that in the anything in india yes sir i think uh... In Amazon also we have that. So Amazon, where do you go and collect it? It will show the store near by store. Oh, near by store it will show. Okay, good. So therefore, if you want that functionality, you can enable it here. Otherwise, you can just disable that functionality. That's fine. Next, one more thing is that. So can you please pay attention? Can you please pay attention? Now you are going here and placing the order, right? When you place the order, this functionality is important. That flow is important. You need to pay attention now. so when you try to place the order here when you try to place the order so one workflow will be triggered one business process will be triggered that's called submit order business process submit order process submit order process so what is this for okay so let's say you submit the order here you place the order here once you place the order here there are a bunch of the activities will happen there are bunch of the activities will happen so all those activities will help us to take the order successfully then the question is what kind of activities will happen after submit order or when i click on submit order what kind of activities will happen that is specified here what is the name i specified here order process so you can see the name what is specified here is order process what is the meaning of order process let me show you what is the meaning of order process let me show you so you can go here 
you can go to this, you can go to this, you can go to this, you can go to this. Okay, there's a fulfillment process. That means after placing the order. So go to the resources and go to the fulfillment process, go to the processes. Now you can see this is the one order process. So that means whenever you whenever you play the order or whenever you click on submit order, this is the business process called. Okay, this is the business process called. What is this? That is nothing but this one. Now, if you go and open this, then you will see what are all the different activities will happen. If you go and open this, now you can see what are all the different activities will happen. Now you can see once you play the order, first it will check the order. Check order action. So check order action will have two things. So one is if the order action. So what is the meaning of check order action? You can see there will be some file for it where you have some logic. You can see there is a bunch of the logic for this. So that means once you play the order in the website, that means you submit the order in the website. Then this is the business process called. This business process is having series of actions, series of actions to take the order successfully or to fulfill the order successfully. Then in that first one is check order. So that means once you click on the submit order, check order will be called. What is the check order? So check order is nothing but this one. So this is having bunch of the logic. So this is having bunch of the logic. Finally, it will tell that uh, order is uh, okay or not okay like that. So if order is okay, you can see here, if order is okay, not okay. If order is not okay, okay, then it is going for check authorized order payment. That means it is uh, uh, starting towards the payment. It is starting towards the payment. If it is not okay, so that means during the order placement, let's say uh, it found some errors or something, then it will give the error. Now assume that nothing is there, everything is okay, then this will be called. So check authorization payment. What is the check authorization payment? So that's nothing but this one. This will have series of code again, or bunch of the code that will that will do what? If everything is fine, then it will reserve the amount. So check authorization fails, then it will show the notification saying that, hey, uh, uh, I'm not able to take the payment. So sorry, like that, it will give the error. Assume that uh, it is able to reserve the payment. If the payment reservation is fine, that means reserve the amount is fine, then this will be called. So what is this? If everything is okay, then check transaction review status. Like this, you have so many things, and in between there is a fraud check. Okay, uh, it will, so because towards the payment you are going, if your payment is fraud, then it will show the error. For fraud purpose, you can use third-party integration, or you can write your own logic, and so on, so on. So, like this, you can see there are bunch of the actions defined here. So, all this will be executed, and finally, order will be captured and the parses process. That is the importance of this business process. So in the real time, so let's say in the real time, after order check, check order, let's say you want to introduce something. Can you see this one, please? After this, you want to introduce something. So that means once okay, once okay, let's say you want to call your own uh, action. So that action is, let's say you are working for Chroma, Chroma action like that. Then you can define that. So then chroma action, then you can write the logic. Chroma action being like that. So this chroma action being what it will do. You can, you can write the code like this. Just now I shown you. Like this, you have the bunch of the activities we perform through this business process. file. That's it. Now, so there is one certification question on this. That's why I will show you the complete flow now. There is one certification question on this. That's why I'll show the complete flow now. Can you see this one? So I will go to the documentation once and I will show you in the documentation so that you can start read and remember that complete flow. Okay, so you can go here. This is content catalogs. In the content catalogs. So right now we are talking about business process. 
okay so you can see submit order submit order business process yes you can see here can you please after here so once you click on the submit order i have shown you this screenshots everything here once you click on the submit order this is the business process called and where is the code for this this is the code for this it is having the series of actions i just shown you and the corresponding code also you can see for some of the files i just opened and shown here now this is a complete flow okay so therefore explain order management if anyone asks the question explain order management then this is what you need to explain okay so for order management purpose okay you have the business process okay so this is the obotv business process engine uh, for full uh, available in this extension that's what i shown you just now the extension information all those things then if you see the complete flow this is the flow so you can see first you play the order once you play the order it will come to check order so check order is having bunch of the logic if everything is fine then it will go to the next step called check authorized order payment if uh, there are some challenges then it will go for errors if this is good then it will reserve the amount okay if this is not good then it will show the payment failure notification like this you have series of actions you can see this is what exactly internally will be executed and that series of steps are mentioned in detail here can you observe here the scenario first one is check order what check order will do it verify the required data so it verify the required data so if you want to see the logic check order logic just now i shown you right uh, check order action dot java so you can see what the logic it is having check order execution so uh, it is going and getting the order information getting the order information and it is checking if the order is null if null it is not okay so that means uh, there is a problem like that if not null then it is coming here okay so it is coming here it is checking the order information set the order status it is setting the order status so that order status implementation is available some jar files that's why it is not showing yeah it is there in the dart class file that's okay but you can see here so if the order status is set then that's okay like this you have bunch of the action returned here bunch of the action returned here so based on that uh, you are verifying the data based on that you are verifying the data once you verifying the data then it will go for the check authorization payment so what this will do check that the current order has the payment information attached to so that means order is attached with the payment or not it is going to verify it if yes then reserve the payment what is the meaning of the reserved payment so it is going to change the order status to payment reserved so that means if you go to the back office anyway i will show you when we in the next week we have a concept called the cart and order functionality that time i will show you where payment is captured where payment is stored where these flags are stored all these all these things then once these are if this is not okay then send the payment failure notification if these are all okay then it is going to change the status so assume that uh, when it is uh, changing the status there can be some fraud check fraud check means what customer is in the black list or customer is not having the enough amount like that so then it is going to send the uh, fraud notification saying that hey customer is not having enough balance customer is not having uh, or in the block list or something like that what is the meaning of customer block list and all we'll discuss next week as i said there is a cart and order functionality that time i will cover all these things okay so then uh, if everything is fine that means a customer is good the customer balance is good all these things then uh, sometimes we also check the order manually right so let's say in the icici you do the 10 lakh transaction or you do the 20 lakh transaction are they doing transaction are they completing the transaction automatically or they will call you and verify it they will call and verify it they will call and verify it so that's why sometime manual order check is also required okay so by whom csa csa means customer support agent so therefore customer support agent verify the order manually if the order is having certain uh, huge amount or huge products like that that too you can define it what is the criteria for it so assume that a manual manual order verification is good so 
so if manual order verification is good then then order is created successfully and uh, no fraud nothing or uh, assume that uh, order uh, manual verification is not good so that means that they found some challenges then they will cancel the order assume that manual verification is also good if the manual is also good then order placement notification that means your order is placed successfully like that you can send the you can send the information and in between if you want something else also you can do the changes that's what i told you so let's say in between if you want one more action here you can just configure however the flow just now i explained okay next so if the uh, once you send a notification then take the capture the payment so first we reserve the payment then capture the payment two things are there here so if you see here you are reserving the payment here you did not take the payment but now once everything is fine then you are going for the capturing the payment so during the capturing the payment there can be failures if failure send the payment failure notification if everything is good there is one more functionality called the split order functionality there is one more functionality called the split order functionality now let's understand what is the meaning of split order functionality because there is one certification question here on the split order functionality split order functionality and we can see the split order uh, information also but let's understand the split order functionality let's say you placed one order with two four items so this is the scenario what is the scenario so the scenario is you place an order with four items now did you observe sometimes did you observe sometimes two two items are one day and two items are delivered in some other day did you observe that you just to place the order you just to place the order and sometimes do you see uh, two items delivered separately two items delivered separately did you observe that yes 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 two items coming today and two items coming tomorrow so what could be the reason there can be reason that two items are available stock okay two items are available immediately or let's say warehouse one and two items are available in another warehouse two so that means let's say two items are available in the kukitpalli warehouse two items are available in the dilsanagar warehouse then instead of shipping the two items from dilsanagar to kukitpalli and deliver all ones you can deliver this to now you can deliver this to separately so that means this is what split order by split order by multiple warehouse. consignment warehouse warehouse split see you are splitting the order by what warehouse next second thing you place the order and uh, did you observe two items are coming today and two items are coming tomorrow so this could be reason what availability two items are available immediately and two items are available after four days coming uh, after four days so that means two items are available after four days so this is what so how you are speaking about that tell me you are based on availability hmm based on availability ah based on the availability based on the warehouse based on the availability and so on so so on so then third scenario so you can also see that uh, when you place the order in some of the websites you have the option to specify and send these two items okay two items so you place the order with the four items but you have a option to specify send these two items to uh, koti address and send these two items to send these two items this option is there in some of the websites send these two items to let's say uh, kphb address did you observe this okay some of the websites are having this option that means you are splitting the order based on what 
delivery yes. address based on the delivery address you have multiple delivery addresses that's why you are splitting the order based on the delivery address and so on so so on so on so that means let's say you play the order which order number is nothing but 1001 can you please observe this your order number is what 1001 you need to understand this one please your order number is 1001 and so on so so on so now two items are coming today and uh, two items are uh, coming tomorrow when these two items are coming when these two items are coming you will have the same order number or something different so you may have 1001.1 .1 or 1001 hash one or some companies may use 1001 a dot a like that yes or no then when two more items are coming tomorrow then they will name this as what thousand one dot two thousand hash dot two thousand hash dot b like that you will have yes or no did you observe that didn't observe this yeah, you can observe that. Okay, so the main order is a thousand only, but uh, your order is split into multiple parts. These are called consignments. These are called consignments. Now, what is the meaning of consignment? So, when order is split into multiple units, you get the packing, right? That packing is called consignment. That packing is named with a unique number. That's called a consignment. So that's called order, order split, and consignment terminologies. Consignment terminologies. So therefore, as per the Vovo TV, as per the Vovo TV, you have this uh, order split functionality is given for us. Now there is one certification question. As per the Vovo TV, what are the order split functionalities available? What are the order split functionalities available? Okay, for that you can go to the material number 17. Yeah, this one. Okay, so split. So you can see here, explain order split functionality. That's what I told you. So you can split the order by available count, delivery mode. Delivery mode means what? So let's say you want to deliver some items at free of cost. You want to deliver some items at a premium cost like that. So delivery date, delivery address, by warehouse and so on so so on so so these are all the different uh, uh, split order statuses given for us this is one more certification question asked for me what are the available split order statuses these are all the different split order statuses given for us and uh, on top of this if you want to follow your own strategy you can see here if you want to follow your own strategy that means uh, uh, you want to you want to split the order by something else you want to split the order by something else. Then let's say you want to, let's say uh, you play the order and that order two items you want to go and pick at store. Two items you want to pick at store and two items you want to uh, deliver it. Then you need to write the different strategy for it, right? You need to write the different strategy for it. If you want that kind of strategies, if you want to write kind of data is yes that is also possible by uh, by using this uh, uh, abstract split strategy and uh, write some implementation on this write some implementation on this like this you have bunch of the functionalities as part of split order so you need to understand three terminologies here split order split order this order strategies and if if you don't if you don't want to use that strategy and you want to use your own strategy that is also possible finally what is the meaning of consignment so that's why when you play the order so i don't have orders here we can see these consignments all these things sir uh, next week when we discuss the order functionality but that time don't uh, uh, let's not expect this explanation uh, yeah we have the orders here you can see so let's go and see one order and you will see the consignments also Okay, so this is the R and uh, okay, let's say I told you payment uh, reservation, all those things, right? You can see that information. So we discussed the uh, payment uh, reservation, right? One of the step called payment reservation. Yeah, so you can see here, 
uh, yeah, reserve the payment. Okay, so can you see the step number two? Check the payment uh, order is having the payment info. Order is having the payment info. How do I check it? You can see this is the order customer placed, and you can go to this uh, payment and delivery. You can go to the payment and delivery, and you can see here payment information is available. Payment info model. Sorry, here payment info model. So if this is there, then second step is successful. That's what the meaning. If this is there, then second step is successful. That's what the meaning. Like this, you have a bunch of the functionalities. And uh, so you can see there is a fraud check. So order also will have the fraud check. You can see here. You can go here. You can see fraud, fraud report. So right now you can see here. If I go on to see the report. If I go on to see the report, everything is OK. So that means no fraud. Everything is OK. No fraud. Like this, you have it. Then you can see there is a consignments right now. Can you see this one? How the cons I said the uh, actual order is what here? Can you see actual order is 3001, right? 3001 and the consignment is created with uh, underscore zero. That's what I told you. So some companies use us like this. Some companies use us like this or some companies use us like this. 1001 underscore one. If there is one more consignment created, then you will see. Okay, 1001 underscore two. Like that, you will have the different different consignment statuses. I think it is starting with a zero here. It is starting with a zero. And you can also have A, B like that. It's up to you. That's it. Is that clear, everyone? Is that clear in your So you can see the consignments. Now, if you play the order of different uh, items, so different uh, warehouse items, different warehouse items, and uh, sometimes you will see this consignment also. Two consignments get created. We'll see if that scenario comes into the picture. So, so far, any questions here? So far, any questions? No, it's not. Continue. This conference will now be recorded. All right. So therefore, uh, if no challenges, you can see. Um, so order is split into multiple consignments. That's what I told you. Now I told you what the meaning of consignment and where you can see the consignment information and so on, so, so on, so. Then finally, it will go for order process. So once order is processed successfully, then you will send a notification saying that, hey, order is processed successfully and all this information is available in this business process and so on, so, so on, so That's the key important points about this. About this uh, order submit process. Order submit process. That's it. Now let me go to that warehouse again. Warehouse. Base store, base store, right? Sorry, not warehouse, base store. Let's go here, and we have seen the warehouses information. We have seen these all these things, and we have seen the payment provider, buy and collect, and we discuss the submit order, all those things. So the next one is the uh, every website will have. Okay, every website will have distance calculator, right? Okay, distance unit so let's say in india what the uh, distance unit kilometers and uh, do you want uh, kilometers meters or something else you can specify here so these are all the different functionalities features given at the base store level now do you want to allow express checkout what is the meaning of express checkout again uh, we will discuss as part of uh, carton checkout next week for now let it be for your website, if you want uh, express checkout, you can enable it. Otherwise, you can disable it. Next, uh, estimated tax enabled. So for your website, do you want uh, estimated taxes? So what is the meaning of estimated taxes? Assume that uh, 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 external tax is not available. If external tax is not available, you want to give the estimated taxes. So if you want to give the estimated taxes, you can may test say that uh, estimated taxes enabled like this. Estimated taxes. 
like this you have bunch of the features or functionalities at the base store level base store level that's it any questions so far this conference will now be recorded all right if no questions let's continue next so we have seen based on features or functionalities then let's see website features and functionalities so let's go to the apparel uk website so this website is also having bunch of the functionalities or features let's understand one by one so now website related website or site related features or functionalities so the first one is id we discussed the, what the id id is used for programming purpose second one is name okay name is used for display purpose then active is a flag available to make your website is active or inactive then you can configure the base store for it just now we discussed about the base store then what else tell me okay so you can configure the product catalog and the content catalog right do you remember we configured yesterday yes yes okay so yes so therefore default default catalog which is nothing but a product catalog and uh, next one is content catalog we have an option to configure the content catalog so you can see here here there is an option to co configure the content catalog that's it next uh, okay so that's about this one that's about this one next one is theme okay what is the meaning of theme anyone quickly please what is the meaning of theme? And of background. Okay. So in a simple word, a theme is nothing but set of colors and fonts. Set of colors and fonts. So that means how you want colors for your website, how you want fonts for your website. So SAP Commerce by default provides uh, uh, for B2C, we have Alpha, Lambda, so you need to remember functional people because this is one more certification question. For 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 B two C we have alpha lambda. For B two B. For B two B. Okay, you can see here. For B two B, so it's a lambda. Yeah. So basically, SAP Commerce by default is having what kind of themes? SAP Commerce by default is having what kind of themes? Alpha and the lambda. lambda. Alpha and the lambda, very good. Next, uh, the point what you need to remember is, what is the meaning of theme? Set up the fonts and colors. Okay, so that means whatever fonts and colors you are seeing here, let's say I go here, whatever fonts, colors you are seeing here is part of the theme. So let's say example, so this is the uh, right now, okay, let me, I, I want to change something. Let's say I right now there is a gap here, right? I want to increase this gap. I want to increase this gap. So then I need to change this. So let me change here first, then I will show the code. So right click inspect element, right click inspect element, and you can see there is a li, this one, there is a ui, and this is the div. This is a corresponding div for it. Okay, now you can see there are uh, colors of fonts, all those things. What is the theme? Theme is nothing but set up the colors and fonts. R styles. Okay, so uh, set of, so you can say set of colors, fonts, styles. So this is nothing but theme. Okay, now let's say I want to change something. If you want to change something, let's say example right now font size is 14. So let me make it as, do you see? It is increased, font size bigger one. So you can see that gap, all these things are coming. Okay, similarly, I want to change the color. So let's say color is uh, F, F. FF, FF. I don't know where it is applied. Okay, 
So like this, a background color. So let me use background color as this one. Okay, now you can see that the background color is changed a little bit. So let's go here. So let me right click inspect element again. Okay, so this is the corresponding div and this background color. This background color, I want to make it as something. So can you see? This background color is wherever it is applicable, it is applied. So like this, you can change the, uh, so these are all given for us. So that means set of the fonts, set of the fonts, colors, styles are given for us. Now, do you think that uh, these are sufficient for your company or you need to do customization? Do you think that these are sufficient for your company or we do customization? We do customization. Or we do the customization. Definitely we need to do the customization because every company, every company will have its own uh, theme. So now let's say you want to customize it. So how do I customize it? Let me show you. So right now this is using which team? Alpha. Right now it is using which team? Alpha. So therefore right click inspect element. Right click inspect element. Uh, go to your code first. So this is what your code. Go here, go here, go here, go here. And uh, UI is available in the store front extension. You can go here. Then you can see web. Okay, web web root underscore UI and response you. So you can see team underscore alpha and uh, right now CSS. Now let me open this CSS. Let me open this CSS and uh, I want the CSS for this. So this is the name right now we have. So let me go on to search it. Sorry. It's not there here. If it is not there here, there can be in the commons. Commons. It's not in the commons. So theme underscore alpha style. Then I open the style. Then what is the name we have right now here? Okay, let's see JS off campus links. This conference will now be recorded. All right. So how do you find that corresponding team? How do we change that to team? So you can see here, let's say if you go to this uh, footer section and you right now, this is the gap we have and you want to increase the gap. So right now there is uh, some gap here. You want to increase this. If you want to increase this, how do we do that? You can right click inspect element and uh, footer. Footer, you can see. Okay, so here footer okay so you can see here this one so let's say you want to have that uh, padding all those things then you can specify you can see this is coming in the strikeout that means that is a wrong one so pixel is the correct one and you want to increase to 50 so you can see that uh, changing fluid container is changing so like this you can change it similarly you can take this uh, due classes you can take the due classes and go to this uh, store print extension web 
webroot underscore ui response you themes right now it is the alpha theme go to the styles open that style file and look for that uh, particular parameters look for that particular parameters you can see there are bunch of the activities written with that right now the one which we are looking is this one so auto auto 10 10 so that's what we had by default auto auto 10 10 was there by default like this you can find out and you can do the changes on top of this so let's say if your company think that okay hey this color is uh, we need to change it okay so this color you want to change it let's say footer on top and this is the complete footer and a footer this one so for this if you want to change the color then you can specify background color all those things so you can see color right now is something let me try to apply yeah you can see can you see that it is changing that font color is changing right now are you guys are able to observe Can you guys observe that font color? Okay, so you can see this got changed. Now, similarly, uh, that's how you can change the color and the background color. You can see there's a background color. So if you want to change the background color, you can see that background color is also changing. That's it. So like this, uh, you can go here and uh, take that container. Container. Uh, so this container right now, for the container, I am trying to change the footers and all, uh, that background colors and all, right? So those also will be available. You can go and keep searching it. Okay, click on next. Now you can see, so for the header, how they want to apply. Okay, so you can see this, uh, you can go down for footer, how they want to apply. So zero pixel radius, all these things. Okay, before, after, that's fine. So this is what just now we have seen. And uh, you have these functionalities. Somewhere else you will have that colors, all those things here. So like this, you can find out. And if you don't want to use this one, then you can start uh, customizing this particular theme. So start customizing particular theme means what? You need to change that colors, fonts, all those things. That's it. Then you will get something like a Reliance Digital. So let's say for Reliance Digital, they want this background color. Then you can change the background color as whatever I shown you just now, and so on, so, so on, so on. Like this, we can use the theme. That's it. So the next important one is, let's move on to the next one. So the next one important one is channel. So channel means, are you developing B2C site or B2B site? You can specify here. Are you developing B2C site or B2B site? You can specify here. That's it. Then uh, solar indexer job, we already discussed. Solar search, we already discussed. Let's not spend time again because we had almost a four hour session on that. Okay, next important functionality is cart removal job. We'll cover that now. Okay, we'll cover that now. So uh, this section, we will cover it now. What is the meaning of that cart removal job and what is the importance of it, we'll cover this now. Are you guys are there? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, good. Now let's uh, cover the cart removal job. Okay, see the sum of the surveys, please. See the sum of the surveys. Now let's say, you have a amazon.com you have a amazon.com assume that daily okay 100k people are coming 100k people are coming so that means people are coming means what so they just coming here and typing amazon.com and they just see this they just see this they just see the content so when 100k people are coming to amazon site how many people really play the uh, 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 add the item to cart when 100k people are coming how many people really add items to cart so this is a nice survey here 100k people are coming 100k people are coming means what i just came amazon so i'm just seeing oh is there any 
uh, uh, is there any offers today, something, something. I'm just seeing it, I'm not adding. How many people really add the item to cart? So 20%, which is nothing but 20K. Which is nothing but 20K. So that means how many carts are created? 20K carts are created in where? In database. In database cart table. In database cart table. So that means if you go to back office, you can see there is a cart table. So the moment you add item to cart, that will come and store here. So the moment you add item to cart, that will come and store here. So now 100K people are coming, only 20K people are adding item to cart, then remaining 80K are called what? Remaining 80K are called what? Window shopping. Window shopping yes. is what? They just come here and see, is there any offer or oh, no offer? Let me go, that's it. Okay, good. Now, 20K cards are created and stored in the database, that's good. 20k cards are created and stored in the database. That's good. And uh, so let's say I added item to cart. Let's see this here. You can you can see the flip cart. So in the flip cart, you can see I added item to cart, but I did not buy at all. Okay. You can see in the reliance detail. Let's go and see the reliance detail. We added item to cart, but we did not buy at all. Okay, so let me add the item to cart quickly. That's okay. So you can see here, I'm just going here, I'm just going here and adding the item to cart. Let's go here, add the item to cart, let's say 5 lakh 90. Okay, this is sold out. Any any other product which is uh, having the uh, mobile accessories? Okay, so go to this, go to this. Okay, add the item to cart. Okay, added successfully. Now you can see here, please. I just added the cart. I am not buying, <laughs> but it is stored in the database now. It is created in the database now, in the cart table, good. Now, when 100K people are coming, how many people really add the item to cart? Around around 20%, I'll use the word called around, that's it. Then how many people really place orders? Again, around 20% of the 20K, around 20% of that 20K, which is nothing but what? which is nothing but around 4K. So that means 4K orders are created in database. In which table? Those are in the order table. Those are in the order table. That's why if you go to the back office, you can see there's an order table also. You can see order table. So therefore, out of 20K cards, 4K cards are converted into orders. Out of 20K cards, 4K cards are converted into orders. Then what about remaining 16K? What about remaining around 16K cards? Cards created in database. Created in database. Do you keep those forever in your database? Do you keep those for forever in your database? Or you need to start cleanup? start cleanup okay or you need to start to clean up those okay you need to start clean up those so the answer is yes we need to start clean up those now do you manually clean up those or you need a job to do this do you manually clean up those or need a job you need a job to do that you need a job to do that so the answer is, you need a job to do that. Answer is, you need a job to do that. So that's called a cart removal cron job. Removal cron job. So this is given for us. You can also see the code if you want. So you can type cart removal 
job. So this is a cron job. Anyway, in the technical sessions, we have uh, we have in the technical sessions we'll see how to create the cron jobs and all. But this is the job given for us. Okay, so this is the job given for us. For this job, you can specify the age of the anonymous cards, anonymous user cards, and login user cards. You need to specify the age of the anonymous user cards and login user cards. That's it. So we have two types of cards, right? You can see here in the reliance, I added item to cart. In the reliance, I added item to cart, but I did not provide any inf my information. I did not provide my any information. That means this cart is login user's cart or anonymous user cart? Anonymous user. Anonymous user cart. Similarly, I try to log in and add the item to cart and don't buy it. Then in that case, login user's cart. So therefore, we have two types of cards. Users who don't log in and try to add item to cart, those are called anonymous customers cards, anonymous customers cards, and login customer cards. So that's why here you have an option to specify the cron job information. That's what this is the job. Then specify cart removal. Okay, cart removal for anonymous users. Cart removal for login users. So that means let's say you are specifying here six months. So let's say here you are specifying 10 months. Then what does that mean? The meaning is this job will check is there any anonymous user cart which is more than six months is. If yes, delete it. Then this job will check is there any login user cart which is not used more than 10 months. If yes, delete it. Like this, this job will take care of cleaning the jobs or cleaning the cards. Okay, so can you please see this one again one more time? So as I said, we have a card removal. This is important functionality given for us. So let's say someone is uh, 100K people are coming to the shopping site. Then the survey says around 20K people uh, try to add the item to cart. Then around 20K of this 20, 20% uh, of these 20K people try to play the orders. So that means uh, out of the 20K cards, 4K cards are converted into orders. What about the remaining 16K cards? So those remaining 16K cards, do we keep in the database forever or we clean up it? Yes, we need to clean up it. So do we keep clean up manually or do we do we need a job? Do we need a job or we need a job? Yes, definitely we need a job. And SAP Commerce is already given the job. That job we can configure it and specify what the age of the removals for anonymous cards and login cards. So here you are specifying 10 months. That means this job is looking for the anonymous user's card, which is more than 10 months age. If yes, delete it. If yes, delete it. Like that, it will work. Next, one more point here you need to understand is that now you can see I added item to cart. I added item to cart. I am not using. If you are not using the cart for quite amount of time, then these are called abandoned carts. What is the technical name of this cart? Cart not used by the customer for more than two hours, more than two days, more than 20 days. We call them as what? Abandoned cart. Name, that's it. It's a name. So therefore, these abandoned cards you can give the you can give to marketing team so that they can follow up with the customers. You can give to the marketing team so that they can follow up with the customer. So that's why there is one one uh, integration. Uh, you will see SAP Commerce Cloud. Okay, abandoned cards, abandoned cards, abandoned cards for SAP Marketing Cloud. So that means commerce cards, abandoned cards. Abandoned cards means not user cards. I am sending to marketing. So the technology, marketing technology purpose is what? That will take abandoned cards information. That means abandoned card means unused cards information and you start doing the marketing. So for that you have some kind of integration. Okay. 
abandoned card replications you can see uh, you can see abandoned cards replication to the marketing so you can see abandoned cards uh, how you can replicate to the marketing team so you can see so this is the sap commerce and this is the marketing cloud so from here you can collect the abandoned cards let's say if your company decided cards which are not used more than two days are called abandoned cards then you can find out the abandoned cards which are not used more than two days and send it to the marketing team now marketing team what they will do or marketing uh, cloud technology or team what they will do they will check oh this is created by santosh oh let me take santosh information and start sending reminding to him like that you can use this particular integration so this also one of the integration we use in the real time here so exchanging the abandoned cart information between commerce and marketing marketing cloud and so on so so on so on so that's kind of integration you need to do it's not on the fly then similarly here you can see so there is a start page start page means what this is a website right so this is the website every website will have the start page start page is nothing but home page that's where home page is coming next redirect url redirect url means what so let me ask a question so i hope you are aware of this uh, tsc company and hp company uh, some part of hp company merged and we call it as which company dxc okay dxc assume that you are not aware of this merger and you typed you typed can you please observe this you typed csc.com you know only csc you don't know the merger you typed csc.com okay when you type the csc.com where it is going where it is going dxc dxc so if you want such kind of redirections you can specify the redirection urls okay so if you want such kind of redirections you can specify the redirection url and uh, and uh, so you can specify the uh, your website active from and active to so therefore active time also you can specify so let's say this website is uh, needs to be active from let's say uh, this month 20th onwards 20th to 30th okay click on save now come here refresh it i think it's a cache here you need to go and remove the cache and do all those things for now you understand the concept right that is sufficient then there is something called url encoding parameters this is where you can specify the language information okay language and currency which needs to be added so right now okay let's look at this one please so i typed this is the website you can see language is added automatically yes or no language is added automatically that is because of this encoding parameters because you added the language that's why it is coming okay next so there is something called site maps site maps we will discuss tomorrow uh, not tomorrow uh, we will discuss on uh, thursday so site maps we will discuss as part of seo concept seo concept which is nothing but on thursday okay so therefore now let me do one thing let me add a new one called the currency uh, currency url -E -N -C -Y. currency add it language is there currency is there click on save now come here refresh and see or you can go here i can go to this yeah anyway that's fine okay you can remove this come here show this okay so that's about this uh, today's session here and we'll continue tomorrow on the so these are the bunch of the base store features and the website features and we'll continue tomorrow on the smart edit so if you have any questions go ahead and ask